Well, praise the Lord. Here we are again for another session of the truth of God's Word as we are digging a little deeper to find the the hidden treasure that the Lord has laid out there for us to be found as, as long as we come to Him by faith in His sacrifice and what He's done for us on Calvary's cross. And if you would, grab your Bibles and uh, turn with me this morning to Proverbs chapter 1. We'll be beginning in Proverbs chapter 1 this morning. And as you're getting your Bibles and getting there, uh, I'll open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the time that we have together, Lord, to be able to come to you, to, to, to seek your face and to look to you, Lord God, to behold your glory and to praise your holy name for all that you are and to be able to get up every day and live our lives in this victory, Lord. And I'm asking you, Lord God, to show us more, Lord, here today in this session, to open our hearts and our minds to give us the understanding that we need, the understanding that we're lacking, Lord, so we can grow in your grace and knowledge and be conformed to your image by faith in your sacrifice at Calvary so we can represent Christ here on this earth as the light that shines into the darkness, Lord God, so souls can be saved and lives can be changed and hearts can be rearranged, Lord God. And I just ask you, Lord God, to continue to move by your Spirit, Lord God, as we look into the perfect law of liberty, as we look into the victory of your sacrifice at Calvary and receive all that you have there for us to, to be received, and it's all by faith. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. In uh, Proverbs chapter 1, beginning in verse 20, and I'm going to be reading uh, quite a bit this morning. And The Bible says, Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she utters her words, saying, How long? You simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. But it's only as we turn at his reproof. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your, des and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for they hated knowledge. That's the reason why right there is because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, but instead they were valuing other things above the wisdom of God. You see, they would none of my counsel. Verse 30, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall kill them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens but whoso hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom but it only comes by hearkening to the way of calvary in romans 10 and 17 it says so then faith comes by hearing and hearing 
by the Word of God. If the Word of God is not being taught in its proper context, which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, then we are not going to be hearing properly. Then we're not going to be able to hearken unto the words that are coming out of the mouth of, of the Lord because we'll be hearkening unto that which is not right, and that's the wisdom of man. You see, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You see, what we have to offer cannot help in any situation, but it can only harm and bring destruction to those that we're trying to give all of our knowledge to. It has to be the wisdom of God, and the world by wisdom knows not God. You see, we can only know God through the wisdom that He has made the way for us to be able to know Him, and that's through the death of His only begotten Son when we do one thing, and that's simply believe. You see, this gospel right here is just as much for the uneducated as it is the educated. Any person can receive of what Jesus Christ has done for us at Calvary because the Lord comes down to where we are and gives us the simplicity of Christ in Him crucified to meet our every need. And what we need is freedom from the dominion of sin to live in the victory that Christ has won for us at Calvary. So we'll no longer be ashamed of the gospel, but we'll be able to represent Jesus, the light of the world, so souls can be saved in a place that is full of darkness and pride and it's getting worse and worse by the day. But it's only as we come back to the sacrifice and take hold on that nail-scarred hand of Jesus and allow the Lord to move in our hearts and lives. You see, that's where we're lacking too many times. We try to do it in our own strength and, and abilities, and I'm guilty far above everyone, I'm sure. I'm sure that's probably the heart and cry of most believers in Christ because we're not sitting here trying to judge ourselves among one another, but we're just simply looking to the cross and allowing the Lord to show us what we need to see that He won for us at Calvary so we can get up and walk in the victory free from the things that we see that ain't right and pleasing to Him in our own hearts and lives. You see, we preach from experience, from 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 living what we are preaching in our own hearts and lives and being able to allow the Holy Spirit to apply that which is needed so we can get up and walk in the victories in victory over the situations that we find ourselves in. But if we're not crying after wisdom and seeking for her as for hidden treasure, then we'll not be able to walk. In the full counsel of God, we'll only be able to walk in a partial understanding because we're not trying to go God's way. We're still trying to do it our way. And the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a way which seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's all that we have to offer is just death. And I mean, death is separation from God. And if it is not repented of, it could very well cost the loss of the soul who chooses to go in the wrong direction because they've embraced something other than the Word of God, than what God has said out of His mouth and all of His words are spoken in righteousness. And there's nothing forward or perverse coming out of the Word of the Lord. It's all in righteousness and righteousness is only revealed in the gospel and the gospel is Jesus Christ and him crucified if we could let's continue to read proverbs chapter 2 verses 1 through 6 it says my son if you will receive my words and that's where we've got to stop right there we we've, we've got to be in a place to where we're hearkening unto the Lord, to where we're, we're receiving through the only way that faith can come into our hearts and lives. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. If you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. If we are inclining our ear 
unto that which is right, which is Jesus Christ and his sacrifice at Calvary for all, then we are going to be applying what we know to our own personal lives to be able to walk in the victory through every situation and circumstance that comes our way. But that can only happen as we are not trying to do it, but we are allowing God to do it in us and through us. You see, that that's where we mess up as we start trying to do it, and we're going to fail because we ain't perfect. But thankfully, we have an advocate with the Father, and we don't make excuses for our imperfections. We repent. You see, we're still in the day of repentance, and today is that day when we fall short of the glory of God. Now faith is. Now we have everything that we need in Christ and sometimes we just need to repent and come back to the cross and say Lord I messed it up again help me because that's what we're believing in our hearts because that's what God's showing us through his word so if you cry after knowledge because we're applying our hearts to understanding we want to know God and lift up your voice for understanding because we are inclining our ear unto wisdom, because we're receiving His words. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, you see, we are required to do something. We're re required to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, for a workman need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and when our faith is and trust is in christ and the cross we're going to be hungering and thirsting after his righteousness and we're going to be filled because we're blessed we're blessed of god we're we're blessed with that which is right we're we're the people of god and god's not trying to hide himself from us but he's trying to reveal himself to us so we can walk in him by way of what he, the way that only way that we can and that's by faith in his sacred by looking to the cross exclusively and allowing the holy spirit to do it inside of our hearts and lives what we can't do in and of ourselves but if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures you see we are to be seeking that which is right, that which only comes from God by way of the cross, above everything else, we are to be we are to be learning of the avenue which God works by. You see, we're coming to a knowledge and understanding of what Jesus has done for us at Calvary's cross, to where we can get up every day and live our lives in the victory that he has provided for us through his death and atoning for all sin to where sin will no longer dominate and control. It will no longer rule and reign in our hearts and lives because Jesus is reigning supreme in our hearts and lives. But you see, if we are looking to other things, if we are inclining to other things, if we are receiving words outside of what Christ has done for us at Calvary, and I don't care what preachers preach, it. I, I ain't holding men in high regard of who they are or what ministries they have. What I'm holding in high regard is the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified that saves the sinner out of sin and sanctifies the believer to where we'll no longer remain in the condition to where sin is dominating our hearts and lives because we've taken hold of on that nail-scarred hand of Jesus. And I'm thankful for those who are preaching the message of the cross, for those who are clinging to it. And I'm praying for others out there who are uh, struggling with this message and struggling with other things trying to come in their ministry and take over. But I am not going to be a part of anything that is not exclusively Christ and Him crucified. The reason why is because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little corruption is going to corrupt all that which God is trying to des and desiring to do in our hearts and lives by faith in His sacrifice at Calvary. So no, I can't be a part of anything that is not 100% the gospel message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
But if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord. It says then, when you seek for her, because we're receiving the words of the Lord that comes by the hearing of faith when the gospel's taught in its righteous context and we're applying our 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 hearts to that understanding because we're inclining our ear to that and that alone and we're we're uh, we're crying after the knowledge of God that we may know him and we're lifting up our voice unto the Lord for that understanding because we are valuing God above everything else, then we are finding the knowledge of God. Then we are coming to the place of knowing Him. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Wisdom is the knowledge and understanding that God gives to His people through our faith in what was made wisdom unto us. And I'm going to read that again. Wisdom is the knowledge and understanding that God gives to His people through our faith in what was made wisdom unto us. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, beginning in verse 21, it says, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them who believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. And I want to stop right there and go back to verse 22 out of verse 23 to where in 23 it says unto the Jews a stumbling block. And the reason why it was a stumbling block to the Jews is because they required a sign. They wanted to see something. But they wasn't looking for what God was trying to show them. It was foolishness to the Greeks because they were seeking after wisdom, after intellectualism. They had to be wowed by the intelligence of man. You see, that's still going on in the church world and in the world today. Many are seeking a sign. Well, this is what the Lord gave me this morning. In Luke 11 and 29... And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The sign of Jonah was the sign of repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Those who are looking for a sign, it's already been given. Jesus has already died on the cross. The price has already been paid. Sin has already been atoned for. It was promised and given to Adam and Eve from the moment they disobeyed God, God out of his love for humanity showed up in the garden and gave them a promise. Every promise, every word, every scripture in the Bible pointed to Christ coming to redeem humanity in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. It's the fulfillment of what he came, he has already done through his life and ministry. He carried it out to go to that cross for you and me that we might be saved and set free from the dominion of sin by the faith of the Son of God who set his face as a flint to go to that cross to save you and me as long as we look to him and believe. But if we are looking to other things, if we are seeking after other things, then we are not valuing the Lord above, but we're still valuing 
everything else. You see, it's only as we come to Calvary. And I'm going to turn to to Jonah right quick and read a few scriptures in, in Jonah chapter 1 verse 17. And it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and you heard my voice. For you had cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then said I, chapter 2, verse 4 of Jonah, Then said I, I am cast out of your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. Jonah was headed in the wrong direction. He didn't want to do what God told him to do. God told him to go to Nineveh, to Nineveh, to the Ninevites, and give them the word of the Lord. That word was a word to turn them from their sins to a holy and just God who loved them. Today, the message is still the same. Repent and come to the cross. Acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the furtherance of that that we've been given from the moment that we believe is as you have therefore received Christ Jesus your Lord, so walk you in Him. Colossians 2 and 6. We have everything that we need in the gospel of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And the Bible says, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. What is the power of God? What is the wisdom of God? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them who believe. Not an oratorical ability, not intellectualism, as the the Greeks thought the, the Christ and him crucified was foolish because they wanted the wisdom of man. But the wisdom of God is wiser than man. The wisdom of God is tied up in the atonement and the sacrifice and the victory that Christ has provided for us all so we could be set free from our sins and the Holy Spirit could help us up out of that miry clay and set our feet upon that solid foundation free to where sin can no longer dominate or control our lives as long as we continue to keep our eyes upon Jesus Christ and His sacrifice on the cross for all. Because it was there that he atoned for all sin. And our, and our problem, the condition that we was born in, is a condition dominated by sin. But when we was born again, we was given everything that we need. And it's all in Jesus Christ and him crucified. But it's, all, it's, it's only as we keep coming back to that sacrifice day after day knowing that I still need Jesus through the way that God has made, then that's where we're going to receive of Him. Then that's the place that God has provided for us to know Him. But we cannot know Him in any other way. Only through the preaching of the cross. You see, the preaching of Christ and Him crucified is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are saved and learning to live that way every day, it is the power of God and it is the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Verse 25 and I'm going to continue in 26. For you see your calling brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called. You see, the foolishness of Christ crucified is wiser than men. 
but men who would rather hang on to their intellectualism will reject the cross over that. I'll take Jesus. I'll take that nail-scarred hand. I'll take that victory that he has provided for me on that old rugged tree so I can get up and I can live my life and do what I'm supposed to do, representing the light of the world, and that is Jesus Christ by way of the sacrifice. You see, God doesn't want us to be dumb and ignorant. He wants us to be intelligent. But the intelligence that he is placing inside of us is the wisdom of what he has already done for us through giving his only begotten son at Calvary. You see, Jesus is our wisdom. He is everything that we need, but we cannot have that wisdom in our hearts and lives working if we are not looking to the way that God has made available, and that's through the death of his only begotten son. There is no life coming forth out of anything that man has to offer. Not purpose-driven life, not celebrate recovery, not the government of 12, not 21 days of fasting, not anything except what God has done in His Son on that old old rugged cross for you and me so that we could be saved and set free and learn to live that way every day. That's where the wisdom of God comes into our hearts and lives, but it can only come as we are applying our hearts to understanding. You see, we're coming to a resolve. This is all that I want to know because I know this is right. It resonates within my spirit that this is the only thing that can change my life. And the more we give ourselves over to it, the more that Christ is going to be seen in our hearts and lives and souls are going to be one for the glory of God. And let me tell you, that's bringing forth fruit of righteousness unto the Lord because of His holy name, because we're not glorying in what we're doing, but we're glorying in what the Son of God has already done for all. And that's Jesus Christ dying to save the lost, to set the captive free, to deliver the bound, to give the victory to those who would simply do one thing, and that's look to him and believe that everything that we need is in his sacrifice at Calvary. But it's only as we're looking to the cross and believing Believing in that sacrifice on that old rugged tree. In verse 27, 1 Corinthians 1. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yes, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh, not some flesh, not some people because of their status in society, how much money they got in their bank account, the car they drive, the house they live in, or what their last name is, that no flesh should glory in His presence. But of Him... Are you in Christ Jesus? But of God who gave us the plan of redemption by sending His only begotten Son because He loved us and He no longer wanted to be separated from us had a plan and He made the way when His Son came and and walked in perfect obedience unto the will of His Father and fulfilled the law of righteousness that that righteousness might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Holy Spirit as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus and his sacrifice at Calvary. That's where the victory comes from. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, that according as it is written, he who glories Let him glory in the Lord. And in Galatians 6 and 14, it says, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross by whom this world is crucified unto me. The only place that we're called to glory in 
It's the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If it's not faith in the cross, then it's glorying in self and everything else of the which cannot please God because we are to be crucified unto this world as this world has been crucified unto us by faith in his sacrifice on that old rugged tree. But if we are not crying after wisdom and seeking for her as hidden treasure, then we are not valuing God's worth above everything else. And we'll stay in a place, hear me now, we'll stay in a place to where sin is remaining to be in control of our lives. Turn with me to Romans chapter 6 this morning, verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein. The only way that we're no longer going to continue in a place to where sin is dominating our lives is as we are acknowledging that we've been crucified with Jesus Christ. As we are looking to that sacrifice and knowing that we are dead to sin, we've died to the power and dominion that sin had over our lives because we placed our faith in the one who atoned for all sin at Calvary's cross. We're looking to the victory of his sacrifice and we're acknowledging that Jesus Christ has made the way so we could go free. But that way that we can go free was only made through his death for all at Calvary. So you see, if we are not crying after wisdom and seeking for her as for hidden treasure, then we are not valuing God's worth above everything else and we'll stay in that place to where sin is dominating our lives. That's not God's will for our life. It's God's will that we learn to live in the freedom and victory that he has provided for all at Calvary. If you would turn your in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 and I do have a few more minutes and a few more scriptures to go through before we end this thing this morning I just I don't want to stop when I'm nearing the end I want to finish when we're done and in Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding to have the fear of the Lord is to place a greater value on Him above everything else, which is the beginning of wisdom. And the way of wisdom is knowing Him through, through having understanding of what He did for us at Calvary's cross. But without the fear of the Lord, we cannot know Him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Without a greater value on the Lord, through the way that He has made for us to know Him, we cannot understand God. We can't just pick up the Bible and start reading it and... and one understanding. It's only as we look to Calvary. I mean, we can pick up a Bible and read it in one understanding, but we're not going to gain the understanding unless we know how to receive it from God. And that's through the fear of the Lord by valuing Him above everything else through our faith in His sacrifice at Calvary's cross to where Jesus was made wisdom unto us. Righteousness, sanctification, and Redemption. Everything that we need is in Christ through what He did for us at Calvary. Because everything that we need is that atonement working in our hearts and lives daily, continuing to, to keep us free 
and, and lead others into the freedom from the dominion of sin so it will no longer rule or, or control our lives. But if you would, turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 this morning and we'll be closing in this verses, few verses of scriptures as we're coming to an understanding of what it is to know Him. In verse 8, Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. We are not going to excel in the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord until we count all things but loss that we may gain Christ, but we're not going to gain Him unless we are valuing Him and what He did for us at Calvary above everything else. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. He's there to be won, but it's only by faith in His sacrifice. He's there to help us and to lead us and to guide us out of the situations that we find ourselves in to where we're valuing things greater than Him. We're placing a, a value on this thing or that thing. I've got to do this or I've got to do that. My job's more important or my family's more important or my attendance in church is more important or... Uh, my this or my that's more important. You see, it's, it's all about learning to deny self and place our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ to where that valuing of His worth, the fear of the Lord, is beginning to consume our life, which is the beginning of the wisdom of God, who is Christ Jesus, which was made into us also righteousness sanctification and redemption and in that order yea doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law. Where does our own righteousness come from? The law. Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The righteousness of God only comes by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us. It does not come by anything that we do, but it has come by way of what His only begotten Son has already done for us at the old rugged cross and atoning for all sins. And here's why. That I may know Him. That I may have knowledge of Him. That I may understand Him. That I may walk in the victory that He has provided for me in union with Him as I'm identifying myself to have been crucified with Him by faith in His sacrifice to where that old man of sin, dominated by sin, controlled by the hand of the enemy, was laid to rest and put to death to be remembered no more. Because Jesus has atoned for all of our sins. He has made the way at Calvary's cross so we can get up every day and live our lives in the victory that He has provided for all so that we can go free, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. It's all about Him. But if it's not all about Him in our lives, then we're making it about something else. And the something else that we're making it about, God cannot honor. He can only honor what His Son has done for all on the cross. So to value the Lord above everything else is the beginning of wisdom. 
the beginning of the way to know him by being made conformable unto his death to where we have received newness of life. It's only as we look to the sacrifice that we're going to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be able every day to get up and walk in that victory free from the dominion of sin. But anything else that we put our faith and trust in is us depending upon ourselves to try to uh, overcome whatever our struggles may be. It, it, it's, it's not going to work. It'll just lead us deeper and deeper into sin. And, and, and the grace of God cannot work in our hearts and lives because we've fallen from that grace because we've allowed this thing, whatever it is, to be of greater importance to us than the gospel of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You see, it's only as we surrender it over to the foot of the cross. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be anything, and I'm not going to start labeling things that we have issues with. We're all in the flesh, and we all going to have problems. And as long as we in this fleshly body, we're going to continue in our condition need to be being brought up to our position in Christ Jesus. But when these things do begin to surface as... As me and my boy was having Bible study yesterday, it's the Lord. I remember in Jeremiah, the Lord said, O Israel, can I, I not do with you as, I, as this potter has done with the clay? You see, the Lord was taking that clay and he was molding it and fashioning it into his likeness. It, it takes anybody that's ever worked with clay it, it takes water, dampening, removing the, the 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 hardening pieces out of it. You see, think of yourself on that potter's wheel, and you're in the hands of the potter. And it's by your faith and trust in that sacrifice, and God is removing the things out of our lives. And as long as we in this fleshly condition that we in. Sin doesn't have to dominate our lives, but there's still things that need to be removed. And when they surface, the Lord will lead us through them as long as we take hold on that nail-scarred hand, as long as we stay on that wheel and allow the potter to mold us and shape us into his likeness. God's not throwing the clay away, but God is going to continue to move in the heart and life of those who will simply look to him and believe that everything we need is in Calvary. And I thank you for being here with me and uh, look forward to joining me next Saturday at 10 a.m. if you can. And uh, Lord willing, we will be continuing our Romans chapter 6 teaching, moving on into verses 3 and 4. And then, until then, uh, God bless and stay determined because the only thing to know is Jesus Christ and Him crucified.